once again you are welcome let us pray our father we want to thank you for giving us another opportunity to gather together in your presence thank you father for days gone by in particularly in this month of may in this year thank you for the miracles of each day miracles of each week sunday worship weekly prayer meetings individual prayer meetings father we thank you oh god for your spirit that draws us thank you because we are your children and evidently your spirit lives in us we give you all the glory thank you for miracles you have done in our lives in the past do another one daddy today as we seek your face together in prayer in jesus mighty name we have prayed you are welcome to the early hour of prayer uh, this morning i want to appreciate you for your dedication towards the things of god towards fellowship prayer meetings you know godly gathering uh, and, and and for for mission works for the almighty god and i pray that as we are consciously doing this honoring god carrying out his sacred activities the lord will re reward us mightily he will bless our secular activities that is our career our jobs our schools our projects and all the various ventures in our lives then the third aspect is that it will heal and bless our sensual aspects. You know, the first is the circular. What you wake up to do, to go to work, your project. Then the other aspect is the sacred. That is the church stuff, the godly stuff. Praying, fellowshipping, evangelizing, uh, going to church, doing charitable things. Then the third aspect, the, the third C, is the sensual, the affection, your relationship, yourself, your mind, your psychology, your marriage. The Lord will honor you. The Lord will bless you. And I pray that as you put the Spirit of our Almighty God in all these aspects of our lives, secular, sacred, sensual, the Holy Spirit will overwhelm you it will overshadow you in the name of jesus you know the month we are in is a month of our transfiguration you understand why in a moment now the question is why transfiguration you know i told us on um, you know the other sunday about the fact that or the other day i mean during the first day of this month when we're praying early morning of prayer I pointed your attention to Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. Genesis 2, 19. You see, each day, each week, each month, each year, each season is just like a new baby, a new opportunity, a new thing. And things need to be named. In Genesis 2, 19, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So it also applies for each day. For Adam, it was his kingdom in the Garden of Eden. For us, for RCCG Hungary mission, by God's grace, the pastors are meant to name. That's why the Holy Spirit inspires us to theme each month because it is what God agrees with. And I'm sure, you know, at this time, Adam had the Spirit of God in him. So it's as if the Lord God Almighty put it in Adam to name those animals. So the Lord God Almighty put it in the pastors to name each month. And whatever we've named the month, or whatever we've been naming the month, and what the Lord will be leading us to name the month, is what will be. Transfiguration is a 
season, a month, an experience that each and every one of us will go through. Now, we are going to be approaching this transfiguration from the parable of dry bone. Ezekiel 37 from verses 1 to 14. Let's quickly read. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered o lord thou knowest again he said unto me prophesy please note those words prophesy upon these bones and say unto them o ye dry bones hear the word of the lord Thus says the Lord God unto this bone, Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay snow upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put bread in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I, com- as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the snail and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O bricks, and bricks, upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesy, as he commanded me, and the bread came unto them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Verse 11, Then he said unto me, Son of man, this bone had the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our paths. Therefore, Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you unto the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your grave, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and perform it, says the Lord. The parable of the dry bone that eventually became a great army is a clear picture of transfiguration. Imagine dead, dry bone. You know, I don't know your situation. If you understand verses 11 to 14, the applicable of this transfiguration, the Lord was trying to direct this experience of transfiguration to the need of his people. And in the Old Testament, the greatest miracle is this case where Israelites were taken captive, they left their land, they abandoned their land, and they were in exile. And after 70 years, the Lord brought them back. That is the greatest miracle 
in the Old Testament. It's not the parting of the Red Sea. It's not manna that fell. It's not even all the other miracles we read of from Elijah, from Elisha. No. This is the greatest miracle because it is on heart of for a nation to in this in history it's it's they were the only one in history the israelite going back to their land is the only miracle only historic record ever of any nation who were you know displaced all over the world scattered and they were regarded your own season of miracle is now forget about what it is you may be going through well i'm not saying you should forget i mean believe less of the effects of the negative things you are going through the god that transfigures will transfigure your case now from verses uh, three to four you will see the belief status god asked him ezekiel and he said unto me verse, verses one to two is like the prayer requests what you have, what you, I mean, what you have as your body, as your, you know, as your, as your worry, dry bone. Who wants to associate with dry bone? Who wants to associate with negative results from immigration? Who want to, who, who, who want to associate with, you know, a, a, a stagnancy? Who wants to associate with, you know, no, nothing beautiful, no way forward, uh, no, you know, no direction. Or a kind of a monotonous life, you wake, you go to work, you come back, you wait. In a way, it's good, but sometimes there are more beautiful things than that. Or somebody is in a standstill. Nobody wants to associate with that. That's like a, a dry bone. Or somebody that immigration has rejected over and over. Or somebody that has been rejected, you know, dating, you will date and, and in the middle of the old thing, or when it was almost time. The whole thing will, 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 will scatter. All those are negative things. So see verses 1 and 2 as the needs that burdens us. You know, as individual, even collectively. However, there is the God that transfigures. There is the God that transfigures. Now, the Lord asked Ezekiel, and he said unto me, Son of man, can this bone live? It's like the Lord wants to know the belief status for Ezekiel. I mean, just picture yourself. God's asking you, can your problem be solved? Can this happen? Can this issue be dealt with? And, and you know, Ezekiel, he replied, uh, <laughs> you know, in a very diplomatic way. And I, and I answered verse 3. O Lord God, thou knowest. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. The angel said, With God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, nothing shall be impossible. You need to get your belief status sharply right. Don't be intimidated by the dry bone. In your situation or other persons or other people's dry bone don't be intimidated Ezekiel was not intimidated it, it well maybe puzzled but he was so careful in his reply if God is to ask you or if people are to ask you or if, if you have to evaluate your present situation or you are, you are you are you are in the position of Ezekiel here what would you have answered you will have said ah God this is dry bone this is useless. This is, this is not possible. But Ezekiel was very careful. Now, from verses 4 to 6, you will see the instruction that was given to him. Prophesy upon the impossible thing. You know, I told you that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, whatever Adam called the animal, that is what they are called. Whatever you call your situation, is what will happen. You see, the Lord was in Adam. And he, the Almighty God, named the animal through Adam. By God's grace, as I said before we started, in this mission, we have monthly teams. Monthly teams are what 
the Lord wants us to address each month. For example, we say, oh, the month of transfiguration. Just wake up, or the Lord gave the word before the new month, and God said, transfiguration, transfiguration. Then, it, then comes the new month of May. Oh, then we say it is a month of transfiguration because that is what the Lord wants to do. And it's the 16th of May already. And you say, but I've not been transfigured. My case has not been transfigured. Well, this is a case you have to hold on to. The instruction is prophesy on to the impossible thing in your life. From verses 4 to 6, again it said to me, Prophesy upon this bone, and say unto them, O ye dry bone, hear the word of the Lord. And look at verse 5. So Ezekiel was now saying what God told him. It's as if it was God that put it in his heart to stalk. Just as God put it in the mind of Adam to name the animal. So you have a role to play. Pastors have a role to play. That's why we gather each morning to pray, to prophesy. Thus says the Lord, the prophecy goes from Ezekiel himself to the Lord. Lord God, unto these bones, behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay snow upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put bread in you, and you shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Two Sundays ago, I, I told us that transfiguration takes process. For the Lord Jesus Christ, where we read in Luke, first it was his face, then it was his clothes. Transfiguration takes process. Some can be immediate, just like the three Hebrew children in, 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 you know, in, in the fire. However, in this season, the Lord will transfigure your dry bone case spiritually secularly sensually verse 7 in obedience so i prophesy now if you look at verse 8 and when i behold i beheld lo the snail and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no bread that's one step now verse 9 then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind you see from verses 9 to 10 it's another dimension that's where the holy spirit is needed prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind you say to the holy spirit because of what use is bone with snail covered with flesh but there's no life we are going to make sure that you will stand in the place of prophecy and hold your prayer requests and begin to say what you want to the prayer request and don't stop you know the woman with the the um you, you know the, uh, the 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 vessels and the oil it was when the vessels, uh, you know, finished that the oil stopped. You don't stop. You have to be practical. List what you want from the Lord and itemize them and just move on in the place of prophecy. It works, brethren. It works. You see, this short message from verses 11 to 14 is to encourage those who likely may be hopeless. Don't give up on your situation. You have roles to play. The role of prayer. The role of seeking the face of God. But you say, oh, Pastor, I've been doing that all the while. Well, you continue to pray and hope. And supernaturally, somebody's season is today. Somebody's season is this week. Somebody's season is this month. Before we pray briefly, let's, let me end with this. I have a feeling in my heart that some of us are beginning to, you know, misplace our trust. 
in Psalm 118. Psalm 118 from verses 8 to 14. Psalm 118. The Lord is trying to say that it is better to trust it in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Let your trust, let your confidence, let your hope blindly. You know, when I say blind, just close your eyes and trust God. Don't look for option outside God because they don't exist. You don't trust man at the expense of God. I don't know why the Lord is bringing this up. He repeats it again. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Don't put your trust in government. Don't put your trust in institution. Don't put your trust in a person. Put your trust in the Lord. All nations compass me about, verse 10, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. You will destroy all the enemies in your life. They compassed me about, yea, they compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. I repeat, in this season, the Lord will make you to destroy all the forces and skin and people. Destroy in the sense of, you know, you, 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 you paralyze the activities. You will useless their tricks, their lies, their, their negative things against you. Be they institutions, be they individual, or be they habit, or be they all sort of negative things in the name of Jesus. They compassed me about, verse 12, like bee. They are quenched as a fire of tongue, for in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast trust so at me that I might fall, that the enemies came for you, but the Lord helped me. The Lord will help you. In your places of work, the Lord would help you. The Lord would defend you. In your home, in your marriage, you will be so much transfigured and all the activities of the enemy will be useless against you. Verse 14, the Lord is my strength and song and is become my salvation. The Lord will be your strength. The Lord will be your, your song. I mean, just imagine Israel in the Middle East. So this passage is actually meant for, originally meant for Israel. You can see little Israel in the midst of, I mean, you are following the news. Now America said they won't support them anymore. EU is giving warning. Netanyahu said, if you guys want to stop helping Israel, you can do that. But for Israel, we will continue to fight. And I just said to myself, does EU think they are the ones protecting Israel? Does America think they are the ones protecting Israel? Oh, they should read the Bible. Psalm 118, verses 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 is for Israel. And you know the good news is, is for you also. It doesn't matter where you are positioned. Nothing negative will touch you. You can see when the other day when the uh, uh, Iran sent web, um, a missile onto Israel. Look at defense. And why are you then? Why should you be shaking? The God that watches over Israel does not sleep nor slumber. The God that watches over you does not sleep nor slumber. Your situation may likely look like a dead end, like the case of the dry bone, but in this season, you'll be transfigured. The Lord will help you. Let's close our eyes. Say, Father, we thank you for what you have told us. Thank you for hope for the hopeless. Thank you for your package of divine transfiguration into my life. I want to believe you are praying. Thank you for my sacred life, that is my faith, my spiritual activities, Thank you for my circular life, that is your career, your business, your projects, what people see on your LinkedIn, your, the, your professional title, your academic qualification, what pays you money, your projects, your business activities, then your sensual life, that is that consigns your soul, that consigns love, relationship, marriage, wedding, children, husband, 
I mean, we, we, are, we are all made up of those three things. Sacred, that's for those who of us who trust God, who come for prayer. Then secular, then sensual. Say, Father, I thank you. I pray, oh Lord, any of this of my life that is dead, as I've had today, may they be transfigured. Just talk to yourself. I mean, talk to God. Pray, say, Father, I thank you. I beg and I pray. May there be a transfiguration experience for all the S in my life. I mean, my sacred life. I want to know you more. I want to be transformed. I want to be renewed. I want to be transfigured. I want to draw more onto you. You know, Moses was transfigured because he spent time in prayer. You know, and, 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 and the three children, Hebrew children were transfigured because of their sacred Life testimony say, Lord, I don't want to deny you. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Then your sensual life say, Father, anything in me that is driving my, my suitor away, my supposed husband, my supposed wife, please may I be transfigured. Anything in my life, anything in you that is making your husband you know, to be upset at you or making your wife to be upset at you or making making your children, you know, for that is causing problem in your sensual life. Say, Lord, transfigure me. Roba, shakabra, kasa, tikaba. I've just told us, I've led us to narrow our prayer, our life into those three S. Your sacred, your sensual, your secular. And I want us to pray that the Lord will renew our hope. Oh, there is hope. <laughs> Brethren, there is hope. It doesn't matter how long. There is hope. Hope for, for illegal issues. Hope for marital issues. Hope for secular issues. Hope for, for, for job, for project. Hope for promotion. Hope. Hey, there is hope. There is hope. Say, Father, renew my hope. I want to learn how to have confidence in you, not man. I want to have, I want to learn how to have confidence in you, not princes. That is not institutions, not government. Help me, O oh Lord. Trans, trans, transfigure my heart, transfigure my life, transfigure all that concerns me. You know, God told Ezekiah, Ezekiah, be personal about this thing. Prophesy. So you prophesy over your life now, as you are sitting, praying, I believe. Say, O oh, dry bone in my situation, hear the word of God. You will leave. Ramu Shakataba. And as you are opening your mouth to pray, to prophesy, the Lord God will back you up. Like the dry bone, the, the bone will be covered with snail, then with flesh. Then if he stops, prophesy again that the Holy Spirit will take over. Then dead bone that is now human but still dead received the wind <laughs> received life received holy ghost no in the next one minute just pray in tongue just pray in tongue maka broka she did it rabo sakatika braka seke take a pray in tongue we are, we are prophesying in the spirit all the dead case in your life will receive life. They will be transfigured. Maka broko sheketa gabrakata. Lekesi ke de gagrabo sokoto ki gabraga seke tekeke. Riga broko shikete kekeke. Remember it's an instruction. Prophesy, brethren. Tell the wind. Tell the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come upon this. Rabo shanka broko seke teke ka. Baga broko seke teke riga gra broko shiga da gaga. Leke seke teke riga gra broko seke te ina ba broko seke te. Iga broko seke teke riga gra braga shige de gege. I'm prophesying over your life or the death case in your life. Good case that have died like the dry bone. They will receive divine transfiguration. Macabro kosekete. It has been named, this month has been named a month of transfiguration. A month where impossible become possible. Rabro kashikataka. So shall it be concerning you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rabo kasikataka ribabra gazegedege. In Jesus Jesus, mighty name, we have prophesied. And lastly, I want us to pray for the light of Baja coming up this weekend. You know, the evangelism part is our sacred assignment in this mission. You know, gathering of souls, gathering of believers, discipling, 
preaching, going out. All these are our secret assignment as a mission. I want us to pray that the Lord will make it fruitful, that only the name of God will be glorified, and that the souls that have been destined to be saved, to be touched, be they international, be they native, be they Hungarian, be they whoever. As far as I'm concerned, the mission work is not after any particular people, but souls. Let's pray that God will make it a success, a kingdom success, heavenly success, not, not successful in uh, organizing programs and, you know, jamboreeing. No, no. Say, Lord, we beg you that let souls be saved. Hellfire don't want that. Hellfire don't mind if we do activities, if we do religious uh, exercise and we pride ourselves in uh, moving from one place to the other. Hellfire don't mind. But what Hellfire will mind is when souls are beginning to be saved. Rabba, Kasa, Kabe, Kefa. Father, we pray for light of Baja. Let there be salvation of souls. Let there be restoration of souls. Let dry bone, the people that are dead, and dry and just like in the case of Ezekiel 37 let them be transfigured let them be brought back to life and those who are already dead who have never even been alive lord may you touch them if you are going to be giving tracts preaching singing uh, street, uh, street walking prayer walking in the town of Baja, let your light go ahead of us thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed just raise up your hand where you are. Just by faith, raise up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, the God that answers prayer, we worship you. The God of transfiguration. Ezekiel said, you know. You ask him, Ezekiel, can this dry bone leave? And Ezekiel said, you know, O Lord, it is you that does all things. It is you, God of heaven, that knows all things. And according to your word, Luke 137, with you, nothing shall be impossible. I pray for the hands of my loved brethren raised up. I prophesy over everything acting, standing as dry bones in their life. May they live. May they be transfigured. May their physical faces be transfigured for the necessary suitor. For the singles. Oh, Jehovah, if there is anything that has to do with them being disfigured by the reason of this revelation and prayer, may you transfigure their face, transfigure their past, transfigure their moments, transfigure their habits, transfigure their character in the name of Jesus. If there's any relationship that needs transfiguration, magrabosha kataka, Lord, by the reason of this prayer, may there be that transfiguration rational experience uh, between father and children, husband and wife, between the, among the family, among the couples, in the name of Jesus. If there's any job, any project, any position that needs to be transfigured, magrabo kosekeke, any student that needs transfiguration of their focuses or mindset or brain, Lord God of heaven, transfigure in the name of Jesus. If there's any health-related issue, any art that is sick, any any liver, lung, diaphragm, any bone, any blood, any, any brain or mind or any forms of sickness in the body of all these members and those who could not join us, let there be the divine transfiguration. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. Go in the mind of God. Go and be transfigured. Go and be elevated. The God of Israel will defend you. The God of Israel will protect you. You will never die, but you will live in the name of Jesus. Psalm 118 verse 17 says, You shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord, not in shame, not in agony, not in disfigured, but in transfiguration in this season and the rest of your life. So it will be in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.